decided to make a follow-up video on the video that I made yesterday where I was talking about installing the LED tail lights on my 78 Corvette and uh, repairing the fuel gauge uh, fuel level sender. Well, as you can see, I already got the fuel level sender installed. Got the new boot in there. Got a new gas, ga uh, gas cap. And uh, boy, that fixed the problem. My gauge works perfect now. So that wasn't too bad of a job. I was kind of surprised. I was able to get that cinder out through that hole. And the biggest thing was putting new hoses on. There's a short little piece of hose between the, the fuel lines and vapor lines and the actual um, cinder unit itself. It's kind of tight in there. You have to really get some light on it where you can see and work with it little by little but you can finally get it but that worked out great and uh, I've got three out of the four tail lights installed I was going to show you what that looks like Boy, I'm much happier with those you look really a lot better and I've got one I haven't installed yet I was going to actually show you how to how I put them in these do not come with instructions you're it's up to you you have to figure it out yourself but I've got some things I'm going to show you and talk about here and then demonstrate how they work. So let me put the camera on the tripod here. Okay. Okay, first thing is I'm going to show you these bubble tail lights I had, which I really hate. And that's what I had in there before. And boy, what a difference. You can see they're flat. That's what I like about them. What I thought was really cheesy about these is that white trim backing plate there that it had. It's plastic. And when I screwed in the actual lens, it actually pulled the inserts out of the plastic out and didn't seal very well and one of them actually filled up with water after I washed the car one day so really didn't have much interest in those anymore but as for the new ones uh, they do have a top they're gonna install like this if you turn this around top and that's how they fit it's got a connector that's gonna connect into your bulb socket it's got a uh, printed circuit board inside there. It's conformal coated to keep the moisture out of it. And uh, what's going to happen is you're going to actually connect this into your socket and then put this wire down inside and you're going to screw your socket into this housing, which basically just like a lens on a car on the original lights. Anyway, that's the new one. Uh, they also sent with the kit some metal plates which you see here and uh, they're a little different than the original plates I replaced them and I'll tell you why in a second but that's the original ones and uh, they actually screwed in from the back side with uh, these big Phillips screw uh, screws like quarter 20s I think they are and it still had the uh, spacer nuts installed into them and the new kit came with the plates and the, the spacers and uh, you probably could use this plate exactly the way it is exactly the way it was installed on there the thing is these big nuts get in the way of these little feet that are on the back side of the light so I decided to go ahead and install the new ones and uh, I installed them with this type of screw here it's basically a roofing screw it has a little rubber washer on it it's painted so it won't rust um, what I did is the plate was already drilled for four holes uh, pre-drilled four holes in it and uh, I just put the plate up in here centered it marked the holes drilled through the back bumper here and into this plastic or uh, fiberglass rather and then installed it with four of these screws and that's what you can see here and then um, I uh, snapped in the new spacers they fit nice and tight in there and then once you put the screws through there 
they're permanently attached into that metal. They can't come apart. Now, with the kit, you get a Y adapter. Okay, so what this does, this allows you to take, on this car originally, you'll have one socket that's going to do your brakes and, and uh, turn signals and, and uh, running lights. And then you're going to have another socket that comes out over on this, the two inner ones here, that is actually the reverse light. So this eliminates the reverse lights. You end up with all brakes, all running lights, and then two lights for directionals on both sides. But they give you a Y adapter. This basically puts two of the LED lights in parallel. You screw this into the one socket that you would have here, and then this boot would slide over over that to keep the water moisture out of it. And then these two would attach to your to your LED bulbs like so. Uh, so instead of using this, I already had my setup here for the bubble lights. I had um, dual sockets installed, wired into the harness. So I already had that. So I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to be using the two uh, sockets on each side that I already had wired in there for the bubble lights. And so far it's worked out really nice and it got rid of a little extra wiring and chances of this getting some moisture in it. This has a nice rubber boot on it, but probably would work okay, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this because I've already got it set up. Um, one thing I'm going to use, because my sockets are fairly new, I went ahead and I, I took the seals off of these and put them on here, so I'm running a double seal on there to make a nice uh, seal on the back side of the bulb, or the housing, actually, uh, because... Uh, it was just with one seal it seemed a little loose and I think it would probably let moisture in so I just went ahead and put a, an extra gasket on there. Uh, as it ends up, this is the electronic flasher they gave with the kit and uh, to flash the LEDs like I talked about yesterday on my other video that uh, the load on these bulbs may not be enough to make a thermal uh, flasher flash properly. I already had a heavy duty flasher in this car and they really don't care if you're flashing one bulb, three bulbs, they're really made for like trailers where you, you know it'll flash at a, a regular rate with extra load on it so these work fine with that flasher so I'm just going to leave that in there and keep my electronic one for later in case some, something happens to it. So now for the installation you'll see that this socket or this um, connector here is exactly like a bulb and it'll fit in that socket it only goes one way you have these little dimples sticking out in two different depths it has a screwdriver slot in the back side so you can use a screwdriver to actually push in and install it so that's what we're going to do now There's a right way and a wrong way. You can usually look at it and tell. Okay, I can tell. It's kind of hard to see. You usually only go one way, so let's just try it. The other ones are a little more obvious. Okay, that actually went in. Let's check and make sure it's working properly. I'm going to turn the headlights on, and then I'm going to turn the four-way flashers on, and we'll check it out and see if it works. Okay, there's headlights. Okay, looks right. They all look like they're glowing about the same brilliance, same brightness. Turn the four-ways on. And that looks correct. All four of them are flashing properly. And they're pretty darn bright, too, especially when you compare it to those crappy bubble lights I had. Anyway, let's go ahead and complete the installation. Once you get it installed like so, the wiring is going to go down inside. You might want to be a little bit careful with that. 
and this only goes one way too. It has a little feature in it. It only allows it to go in one way. And with two gaskets on it, it takes quite a bit of effort to actually get them installed. If you're only using one gasket, it wouldn't be that big a deal. It seemed like one gasket wasn't enough, and it seemed like one gas, two gaskets is too much. Anyway, you're going to rotate this around. It does have top right here on the housing. And slide it back in. And they give you some stainless steel screws. You can install like so. I wouldn't recommend over tightening them. You're just tightening down on plastic. Screwing into plastic as well. Just snug them down. And that's it. I think they look pretty good. Hopefully they're going to last. They seem to be pretty high quality. Those uh, the bubble tail lights basically just about fell apart just getting them on there. They were 80 bucks too, which kind of sucks. Anyway, that concludes the video of the installation of the LED tail lights. Thanks for watching.